Hey guys, it's Ryan. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about histology of the tongue and specifically differ differentiate between taste buds and these things called lingual papilla. So let's talk about the tongue in uh, general terms. The tongue has three main regions. The root or the base of the tongue attaches posteriorly to the hyoid bone and the mandible via muscles like the hyoglossus and genioglossus. Uh, has the apex or the tip of the tongue, uh, touches the incisor teeth, and then every point in between there is the dorsum or the dorsal surface of the tongue, which is further divided into an anterior two-thirds and a posterior third. Um, and you can notice that they're divided by this uh, V-shaped terminal, uh, terminal sulcus, also called sulcus terminalis, and so everything anterior to that uh, V is the anterior two-thirds. Everything posterior to it is the posterior third. So uh, this pharyngeal part, or uh, the post sulcus posterior third, houses the lingual tonsil um, and has no papilla on it, which we'll talk about in, a, in just a little bit. And the, uh, in contrast, the oral part, or the pre-sulcus, anterior two-thirds is where all of the papilla are confined to and we're gonna talk about all four of these types. So I want to make this really important distinction between papilla and taste buds. Some people say that all these little bumps here are the taste buds but that's not true. Uh, the bumps are actually called papilla and they are localized projections of underlying connective tissue so this underlying layer of connective tissue called lamina propria elevates the outer layer called epithelium above the base level in that spot and it forms a little uh, tongue bump. And again, uh, these papilla are limited to the pre-sulcus oral part of the dorsum. Now taste buds are embedded within the epithelium of these papilla and they can even be found embedded in other parts, uh, other epithelium of the oral cavity, like on the soft palate and the epiglottis. So they can be found uh, in more places than just the tongue. All right, so the four types of papilla are filiform, fungiform, foliate, which are pretty minor, and the circumvallate. So filiform papilla are the most numerous. They're uh, the smallest in, sh in size mostly conical in shape and arranged in rows. And now they have a thick layer of keratin that provides a rough surface of the tongue, increasing friction. Um, and it can also cause a whitish tint, like if you've ever seen the tongue of a cat, they have very heavy keratization of filiform papilla. So their tongue appears kind of like having white hairs on it. And the filiform papilla uh, do not have taste buds on them or in them, I should say. So here is a histological image of filiform papilla that I found on Google. And it's pretty nice. It shows you the conical shape in cross section. You can see it's like arranged in a row when, when the section was taken. And we can um, easily see this thick layer of keratin here. It's pretty much uh, acellular or it might have some nuclei, but mostly not. And um, we can see right underneath it is a stratified squamous epithelium, which is kind of like our default oral cavity epithelium. And then, um, importantly, this lamina propria layer, this uh, loose connective tissue layer, has these um, projections upwards that are um, perfectly correlated to the filiform papilla above. So it's really like this volcanic eruption occurring down here is causing the epithelium to um, bump up in the same positions. Um, and then the purpose of this, uh, these upward projections is that it increases the contact area between these two layers. And so the lamina propria, which is so thick uh, and filled with um, vasculature and nerves, can supply, support and supply nutrition to the uh, overlying epithelium. So it really just increases surface area. So I mentioned a little bit about the lamina propria, and I just wanted to talk about 
um, these kind of helpful tools. So it's universally uh, thought that the lamina propria plus the epithelium together um, and it causes or creates the mucosa layer. So um, lamina propria plus epithelium equals mucosa, also known as the mu uh, mucous membrane, which is the, the moist lining of the respiratory tract, urogenital tract, and the GI tract, including the oral cavity. Those places all have a mucosa layer. So lamina propria, I remember it by this... Um, little, uh, I guess kind of like mnemonic thing, and I say lamina capria, and I remember lamina, it has lymphatics here, lamina for nerves, and then cap for capillaries, and I for immune cells, and the immune cells include lymphocytes, plasma cells, and especially these B cells that secrete um, immunoglobulin A. So it has like the IA here. So if you remember and you say it like lamina capria, you can kind of fill in the rest of the um, components here. I think it's just a, a silly little way that might help you remember uh, quickly what's, what you're going to find in this layer. All right, so the next papilla is the fungiform papilla. There are fewer of these in uh, number. They're somewhat larger and they're rounded kind of mushroom-ish shape. Um, they have a deep red color because they lack, um, they don't have a, that thick keratin layer, and they do contain uh, taste buds this time. So uh, fungiform papilla, here they are. They're these kind of uh, rounded shapes. You can see again the lamina propria here um, projecting upwards, and also here, we're going to talk more about it later, but here are the taste buds, just a sneak peek, hiding, embedded in this epithelium layer. All right, and then we have the, the foliate, or the, the minor type of papilla. There aren't that many of them. They're exclusively located on the posterior lateral border of the tongue, which is interesting because uh, the posterior lateral border, border of the tongue is a high-risk site for oral cancer. And so an inflamed or swollen foliate papilla can often look like something worse. Um, and then they also contain taste buds. The circumvallate papilla are probably the most um, prominent because they form, I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself, but they form this terminal sulcus that we talked about before. They're arranged in this neat little row, about 8 to 12 in number. They are definitely mushroom shaped. They're the largest ones we have. And um, they're arranged in a V technically just in front of the terminal sulcus. So I said that this is like um, the terminal sulcus itself. Well, it's kind of like the terminal sulcus is just behind the circumvallate papilla so that these papilla can be considered as part of the anterior two thirds of the tongue, basically. Um, and they also contain taste buds. So here's a picture of a circumvallate papilla histologically. And then we have a couple layers here. Uh, we have that keratinized stratified squamous uh, layer here. We have a taste bud embedded in the epithelium. We have the underlying lamina propria projection. Then we have a thing called the cleft, which is this, as you have um, the circumvallate papilla located next to each other and you have this divot in the epithelium, this valley created, uh, that's important when thought in conjunction with these von Ebner's gland. Um, there's a bunch of these glands located at the base of the clefts, and they are serosecreting, which is a watery um, kind of proteinaceous liquid material. And so what happens is, let's say we eat something and we have this nice, tasty uh, f piece of burger. And the this piece of food will get trapped in the cleft. And as it travels down, it's getting... Um, well, the taste buds are right here. So they're right next door to the food particle. So they're able to uh, receive and uh, experience the taste 
of whatever food you're eating. And then, so it doesn't get stuck there, we have the serous secretion from the von Ebner's glands that flushes the food back out of the cleft. So I, just, I love that animation, but hopefully that makes sense as to how this works and how, um, how cool this design is that when food comes down, taste buds are there to taste it, and then water, the sear secretion is there to flush it out so it doesn't get uh, stuck there. And I just have a couple quick questions. How many of these papilla are there on a tongue? Well, roughly about 8 to 12. And how are they arranged in that V-shape, uh, which is just technically anterior to the, the V-shaped terminal sulcus? All right, so now let's talk about taste buds. So these are not the bumps on the tongue. There are actually thousands of them per tongue, and they're located within the epithelium of papilla, and as we said, soft, uh, also soft palate and elsewhere in the mouth. So we have our tongue diagram. We have our row of circumvallate papilla. We zoom in on that, and we get this histological image. And then we zoom in on this component, and we get something like this. So here's our epithelium, and then all of these circular structures are the actual taste buds. And so we have, really cool here, we can see the taste pore, which is so as food slides down this cleft, particles can be um, received through the taste pore. Um, and then we have our taste receptor cells, which are these columnar-shaped cells. Um, and then taste buds will have sort of basal cuboidal cells at the bottom. And then we can see we have a connective tissue layer uh, deep to the epithelium layer housing the taste buds. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.